In this tutorial, we're going to look at different ways of dividing curves. So let's go ahead and create a curve in Rhino. And um, let's start by just using the divide curve component. So you can find this component under curve division. In fact, all of these are under curve division. These are all the different ways you can divide a curve. Um, so we'll go ahead and bring our curve into a curve container, set one curve, and plug that into the curve. Um, and then the next thing we do, need to do is def decide the number of points along that curve or the number of divisions on the curve. So we can do a whole number as an integer. Um, we can divide it, uh, let's do 2 less than 20. Plug that into number. And then you can see as I slide this new number slider, I can change the number of points on the curve. So that's the easiest way to divide curve. I think it's the one you use uh, frequently. Another one is divide distance. So this is really useful if you have a very specific distance that you want to divide the curve. So, um, and this can be a floating point number because this is based on the units that you have set up in Rhino. So it could be 2.25 inches, for example. So we'll just do two is less than uh, 20.000 plug that in and so that's going to divide based on that distance and you can see it starts at the start point of the curve and then we'll divide it every 5.24 um, inches in this case and then it'll just leave the end um, open like that so um, it'll be this is great if you're creating like a handrail and every every post needs to be three feet away um, there's also dash pattern so dash pattern creates a dash pattern so if we plug the curve into here and preview off, PT stands for the pattern. And so that's going to be a list of numbers. So we can make a panel um, to create that list. And then you have to specify the dash length and then the gap length. So let's say we go with 5 as our dash and then 2.25 as the gap. It'll then repeat that same pattern over and over again. You can put as many numbers as you want in here. So if you want to change the dap and gash throughout the course of the line, you can do that by just adding more numbers. But um, it'll always just go back and continue to wrap um, through these numbers. Wrap the list is what it's called. So I'm going to right click multi-line data, plug that into the um, pattern. And then we can pull a curve component out of here, out of the dash, and then preview this off, because this includes the dash, and we're still previewing the original curve. So I'll preview that off. Let's just hide the curve in Rhino so we can see it. There we go. So there's the the um, curve, and then you can actually bring the gap out. So if you want the gap, um, you can also extract the gap from this component. So it really depends on which, um, which line that you want there. Um, so the next one, if you go back to curve division, there are all these other um, options for um, dividing using frames and um, planes. So that's really good if you want to produce like a, a circle geometry on the plane. So let's just try the horizontal frames and see what that does. So plug the curve into there. Let's preview all this off. You can see it places a bunch of horizontal frames on the curve. Um, and so you can build off those and once again you can use the numerical slider for the number of frames and then if I put a circle CNR on there you can see it puts a little circle on that frame so that's really you know that's going to be the same case um, with the divide especially if I have a flat curve as soon as it starts to become three-dimensional so let's go ahead and turn this uh, curve on and move some of these control points vertically you can see all of these frames remain um, in the XY parallel to the XY plane. So that's kind of a nice uh, feature of the horizontal frame. So if I extrude this, for example, uh, and use an extrude component, let's extrude it in the unit Z direction, so vertically. Um, and then we can do a slider for the amount. I'll just copy paste this slider here. You can see you can, it'll extrude everything vertical um, or perpendicular to the XY plane. So that's really useful. Um, you also have curve frames, so you can plug the curve in and then the number. You can see the difference here is that um, the curve kind of changes direction um, in relation to the curve. So it's really up to you, like what you're trying to produce. So you could try either of those and see which one gives you the right solution. 
Um, you can also do perpendicular frames. So perpendicular frames will produce planes that are perpendicular to the line. Let me turn this one off. So it, it flows along the line. So if you wanted to, for example, plug in the circles now to that, and let's also use the frame for the normal direction, you can see um, you can see it'll um, extrude, uh, it'll create the circle um, on that plane. So in the direction of that plane, right now I'm extruding still unit Z, so I can actually change the direction to match the direction of the planes. And this is a good use of amplitude. So right now if I wanted to actually change the length of that extrusion, I'd have to plug in an amplitude component. So I'd plug um, the frame is the vector and then um, the amplitude would be the amount of the extrusion so I can then plug that into the direction. You can see it then follows along um, that line uh, perpendicular to the frame that's, that's dividing the line or the curve.